It's midday. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to News Today on Joy News Multi TV. My name is Kwabna Chencha Hindi Coming up, there's our lawyers of A's broadcaster KKD say their clients will continue to work free as far as victim, as far as the victim remains unwilling to testify against him. Joy News investigations uncover massive diversion of chemical inputs meant for cocoa production in the Ashanti region. Residents of Atadeka in the Pong Katamansu constituency alarmed about the continuous abduction and killing of children in the area. The details of these and more coming up shortly. You're welcome to News Today. Joint news investigations have revealed massive diversion of chemicals and other inputs meant for the free mass cocoa spraying exercise in the Ashanti region. Various collaborators, including security personnel, are set to collude to sell off products supplied by government for the exercise at the expense of poor cocoa farmers. In the first of a two-part report, Erastos Asaridonko exposes how police officers shield alleged perpetrators from prosecution and, in some cases, return impounded items to them. Mass cocoa spraying introduced by the Kufour administration under the Cocoa Disease and Pest Control or CODAPEC placed supply of items under the supervision of district chief executives. The arrangement, however, is said to have changed when Dr. Stephen Opuni assumed charge as chief executive of the Ghana Cocoa Board. The CODAPEC secretariat at the Cocoa Board took over distribution. Chemical brands like Redomil, Funguran, Cosite, Nordox, Agrocom, Confidor, Atara, and Akatamasta are forwarded to chief farmers for onward delivery to spraying gangs for their work. Among these stakeholders, many of these chemicals, clearly marked not for sale, are stolen in large quantities and sold to foreign dealers in Nigeria, Burkina Faso, and Ivory Coast. In the course of the investigation, I met this man, averagely well built, casually dressed, appears bold and confident, speaks fluent tree. For the purpose of this report, I call him Kwame Ujam. He has been tracking the illegal sale of cocoa spraying chemicals for years. He trails the agents, feigns interest in buying the items, and informs security agencies to effect arrest. He has assisted security agencies to seize large consignments of cocoa inputs sold illegally to farmers who are supposed to get them for free. A Buakwa District Police Command, headed by Superintendent Joseph Nyaba raided the residence of one Kweku Sabin at Pokukrum near Ebuakwa a month ago. 102 boxes of assorted brands of chemicals were found in his kitchen as well as the sitting and bedrooms. The suspect was unavailable at the time of the operation, but his wife, Diana Nyama, was arrested. Police estimate the cost of the products at 155,000 Ghana cities. Superintendent Nyaba explains further. And she was put before circuit court in Kawye and she was given bail. Now a bench warrant was issued for the arrest of Sabin, the husband. So we are still looking for him. What has happened with regards to the items? You know, we couldn't get a searchable uh, exhibit store to put the items since there were many. Since we couldn't get a searchable place to put it, the judge ordered that the items be released to Cocoa Board. Has Cocoa Board come for the items? They have. They have come for them. Uh, who came for them? Oh, uh, Mr. Yalungu was even part. You know, he's their, the whole country, he's their security boss and other uh, Cocoa Board staff. And they came with their official Cocoa Board truck to load it. Ojam, however, alleges shortly after the seized goods got to the Abuakwa police, he received a call from Superintendent Nyaba seeking his consent in a 20,000 Ghana CD bribe being offered by the suspects. He says he refused the police officer's request, asking to come back to the station for which he believes he paid a price. According to him, the next morning, police arrested him and charged him for impersonating the Ashanti Regional Police Commander.
Uganda in the sale of weapons. I had visited the Ibuakwa commander. On my way back, I had a call from him that the suspects have offered 20,000 Ghana cities, so I should come back. But I told him I cannot be part of the deal. Then he said I should come back and write a statement. But I told him I've never seen informants writing statements, so I won't. On Saturday, I was picked up by two armed policemen and charged with impersonating DCOP Kofi Buache in the sale of arms. My investigations reveal about two years ago, Superintendent Nyaba, then commander of the police Buffalo unit, and another policeman identified only as Bosheba, led a team to seize cocoa chemicals at a garage at Ebuakwa Menshia. Kwame Ujam's tip off had led the team to one Kwame Ananis compound house, three blocks behind a manufacturing facility in the town. Bosheba and four others discovered about 800 boxes of Atara, Confidor, Akatemaster, and Redomil. Police brought 300 boxes loaded in a van parked in the suspect's house to the police station and kept in Superintendent Nyabe's care. But the 500 boxes in the garage were left untouched. Nobody was arrested and the whereabouts of the items are unknown. A local journalist who witnessed the seizure at Ebuakwa Menshia corroborated the story. I first contacted then uh, Buffalo Commander, Mr. Joseph Nyaba, and he said no. They are not doing any operation like that. I pushed him to the wall. Later, he told me that the man, uh, they knew him. He chopped and gave them to us. Chop. So if I can meet them... Wait, who are they referring to? I'm, I'm referring to Kwame Anani. In some of the cases, reports suggest Cocoa Board officials take over the seized items, but the outcome of investigation remains unknown. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Love FM, Kumasi. Member of Parliament for Ayawasu West Wogon constituency, Imano Chemati Jaku, says he agrees with the chairman of, the, of Nigeria's Electoral Commission that Ghana should employ qualified personnel to ensure a free and fair elections. Speaking on the AM show, Imano Jaku noted Ghana needs a very transparent election. As, as political parties, I think that the imperatives going forward into 2016 is that we must, we must put people of repute people who cannot, like the words you use, who cannot be corrupted, who cannot be intimidated, mm. who will stick to the guns, who will ensure that uh, the election is done according to the, the, the CI that, that, that operates the election uh, in 2016 and all of this. Uh, the, 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 one of the biggest was that it appeared that there were, there were obvious mistakes not on the side of the political parties and the electoral commission. So I think the point he has made is extremely valid that we should not, it is a document and you should leave it in the hands and you are operating a, a, a constitutional instrument. So two things, you are operating, you must, you must the person who is there for the, your party must clearly understand what the CI says. What is allowed to do, what is not allowed to do, what anybody there is allowed to do. I mean, we hear of instances where at elections, uh, a policeman will come and say, tell the party agents to move back. You are not allowed a certain, we will not allow this, or we will not allow this. No, it is not up to the policeman. It is according to the constitutional instrument. The presupposition is that you must be able to read and understand and interpret it. Uh, the, the, that is for the, on the side of the parties, but I think that also on the side of the Electoral Commission, uh, it, is, it must be a big eye-opener. Uh, um, the embarrassment that was caused uh, the Electoral Commissioner, when he himself looked at the thing and for a minute was just sitting down and shaking his head and said, uh, well, of course, at the end he said, they are not my staff, we hired them for just this work. I think that the clear message coming out is that hide the right caliber of persons. What we need is to have a very transparent and open process at the, on the side of the Electoral Commission. And when this happens, then I, I want to believe that what Professor Atahiru Jega is saying would, 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 be coming, would be coming close to it. The, the, what has happened in the past, uh, benefit of hindsight. Meanwhile, member of the legal team of the ruling National Democratic Congress, Abraham Amalaba, insists political parties must also employ qualified persons to man polling stations.
in the last elections, why we saw the kind of mistakes we saw was because of the non-use of teachers in the process. And so you notice that we just picked people who were looking for jobs for a one-day job on the street. They went and did what we, we saw. But it was a decision of the electoral college. Yes. So we have to learn. And that is what I'm saying, that the Nigerians have learned from it. And you saw the caliber of persons. Now, this advice of hiring qualified people should also go to the political parties. They should also hire qualified people to man the processes at, at the police, police stations. stations yeah. Because, again, at the Supreme Court, we notice that some of the agents sign off, whether advertently or inadvertently, they sign off the, the pink sheets. Even but before... Without the any adequate scrutiny. So. Scrutiny. Lawyers of discharge broadcaster Kwesi Cheida Kwase, they do not foresee the states bringing KKD back to court anytime soon. This is because the victim and family are unwilling to testify against the ace broadcaster. The state dropped its charges of rape against the broadcaster Kwesi Cheida Kwa at a court hearing yesterday. Gary Nimakumafo is one of KKD's lawyers and he spoke to us earlier on news desk. You see, normally, or in law, you, you, you get a picture when you have gone through a full blown trial. And uh, evidence have been adduced, and then uh, the court has come to the conclusion that uh, the allegations for which you were before the court, uh, you are not guilty, and you are acquitted. Now, if at the end of the day nobody goes through any trial, then what is, and the law is required to defend it, what it simply means is that. Uh, the Republic has no intention of, of continuing the matter. It could be, you know, so many factors that, that but they don't need to give any reason anyway as to why they are acting all the process So basically, once they decide not to go into the matter, what it simply means is that the accusation still remains accusation. They remain mere allegations. They have not been proven or tested by any, 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 any examination. You know, so basically, 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 uh, nobody can get up and go and say that uh, Mr. KKD is a rapist because they are going to be convicted by any court of law. Nobody can go and get up and say that uh, he still stands uh, charged. You know, the matter as it stands now is put to rest. That is our view on the matter. Okay, I see. So. Obviously, uh, this issue of acquittal, he not being free, even though he is free, uh, obviously it has to be an issue that is on the mind of KKD. Now, is he considering uh, moves to get himself, himself acquitted of these charges? Obviously, the KKD brand is, is a big one. It must have been dented by this image. Well, you see, what we must understand is that uh, a man cannot prosecute himself. You see, if you are an accused of a criminal offense, you cannot go to the courtroom and say that yes, the Republic has decided that it has, has no intention of, uh, of uh, you know, prosecuting the matter. But in my view, because I want to uh, make sure that I'm acquitted of the charges, prosecute, prosecute me. <laughs> mm. and I have not seen that before. Because the, the prerogative to prosecute or not to prosecute lies in the presence of the Attorney General. But I think going forward, mm. going forward, uh, you must put it on record. Now, we do not have any, any feelings against uh, a real fire or link or his family. We do not have anything against them. Uh, I think that uh, going forward, we need to build bridges. And, uh, you know, whatever has transpired, you know, between the December all the way up to now, uh, we will just yes, move this fight, uh, move on in peace. Because uh, that's peace. Uh, okay, finally, before we go, do you foresee the states bringing him back to the court soon, anytime soon? Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. I, 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 don't, I don't foresee it at all. Okay. I don't foresee it at all. You know, the Attorney General uh, is a very experienced lawyer. Mm. I mean, he's a professional. And you can see that uh, he has seen uh, or he can foresee the hindrance and the blocks that he might, he might, he might incur in the course of pushing this matter. So, in order not to incur the state of medicine, you expect. And, okay. uh, you know, being a case of any stage, and then you cannot get a, a conviction and wish everybody died. He says, look, uh, this continued matter. So I think the matter should be put to rest. That is all. Anguished, tortured, and abused. That's how Festus Akoba feels. He's a driver whose room was ransacked while he was bundled away with his co-tenant to the offices of the Narcotics Control Board early Sunday morning. After days of interrogation, Festus was allowed to walk a free man again without any charges. 
Festus is now demanding compensation. It all started on uh, last month, 29th. It was around 12.30 a.m. and I had a call. So when I picked the call, it was a string number and the person mentioned my name and he said, uh, Festus, I said, ah, who, is, who am I talking to? And said, ah, you don't remember me. I, I was the guy you met at Achimot, that to be frank, where the guy was directing the story to, and I said, no, it's a wrong line. So I cut the line, and he called. He called several times, but I didn't pick the call. So around 3.30, the, the same normal called me four times, but I didn't pick. And uh, around some minutes to four, and I heard someone is knocking my door. Bing, 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 bing. The person knocked like four times, and I... I heard Festus, I know you are in there, come out. And I wake up and I said, ah. So I went to my porch and I just pulled the curtains and I saw three guys standing in front of my door. And one, to be frank, one of them is very giant. And he said, open the door. I said, ah, boss, I don't know you, so how can I open the door by this time of the night? He said, eh, we, we want to talk to you. So just come down, open the door. I said, boss, I can't open the door just like that because I don't know you. To be frank, to me, I thought they were uh, like contract killers or whatever. So I said, OK, if that will be the case, then let me go in and pick my phone and call uh, like people, uh, my co-tenants, so that they will come and witness. And uh, he said, if you go in there, you will never like it. Open the door. At that time, I was shaving my, I was shaking my leg, everything, to be frank. I don't know what to do. I was just going up and down. What happened at the Nakob office? When we went there, they, they sent us to uh, investigations room. I was still with handcuffed. And they, they came in there and picked the girl to different, I don't know where, to be frank, I don't know where they, they took her to. We were there about 15, 20 minutes time. They brought her back and picked my brother to away. And then later on, they came for me. I went there, it's like a conference room. I saw like six or seven people sitting in front of me. And then two white men behind me, one at the left and the other one, the right. They, they started interrogating me. They showed me a picture of a, a guy named by Friday. They said, do I have, a, do I know this guy? I said, no. He said his name is a Friday, he's a cocaine dealer. And that, I mean, that is all I can say. And the, the most painful thing is that they have bagged my normal. They have now even bagged my normal. It means they are still monitoring my life. Whatever I do, even if I want to go to WhatsApp, even if I want to watch pictures on it, then the, the message will come, back report captured, back report captured. They have bagged my normal. We have to wrap it up. Finally, what do you want? What do you want done for you? For now, if the whole area is putting fingers on me. I'm even, I'm like, when I close from work, I don't even feel happy. I just go, so I just want to uh, uh, relocate from the area. What do you want done for you? If they can compensate me so that I can move from there, because my mother is also sick. When my mother heard the story, she collapsed and she is even still in the Are house. you going to take this to court if they don't compensate you? If they don't compensate me, I'll find a lawyer who is interested in this case who will help me. For me, I don't have money for a lawyer. So if some, any lawyer is interested in this case and he can help me, because we are living in a country governed by a law. So if we can, I can get a lawyer to fight for me, I'll be happy. You're watching news today on Joy News Multi TV. Stories gone by so far. Lawyers of ACE Broadcaster KKD say their clients will continue to work free as far as the victim remains unwilling to testify against him. Joy News investigations uncover massive diversion of chemical inputs meant for cocoa production in the Ashanti region. But still to come, the Ghana Medical Association is demanding a strict enforcement of the Births and Deaths Act. We'll bring you more on this after this commercial break. Do stay off. And ensure that we enforce our own bylaws, our own legislation. You're welcome back from that break. Now, the Ghana Medical Association is demanding a strict enforcement of the Beds and Deaths Act. The law prohibits the burial of the dead 
without a permit. But Joy News Check show this is being ignored by many managers of graveyards across the country. Joseph Opopubako has been speaking to a grave digger at the Tafo Cemetery in Kumasi, Abdul Karim Ndago. The person died at home. Maybe we have a certain an old, old, old people who are experiencing in those things. They, those people, maybe they believe that the person has died. For that one too, we can even to we can even to dig the grave. So for those who have died at home, they don't demand any medical certificates apart from the old man's testimony that they are dead before you go ahead and allow for their burial. Mm, we don't demand any any certificate or anything. That is why I am telling you. Because as for the old man, they have more experience more experience on those things. They have more experience on those things. That is the reason why I'm telling you, before the person died, they will go and contact that old man. They will come, even our malams. They will come and see, they will come and check the body. They have some point point that they will see at the body before they will put it, oh, yes, it's true, this person is died. Burials without medical certification have led to concerns of possible live burials, especially in rural areas. Deputy General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Dr. Justice Youngson, says enforcing the law will help save lives. That the state itself. It's about time we take a second look at the way we are conducting some of these things. We should be very careful and ensure that we enforce our own bylaws our own legislations on beds and deaths as well. Because the Beds and Deaths Registry is supposed to keep a data for all of us to drive policy. And this policy can bring about a lot of changes in our social fabric, which ultimately should augur well for us as a country. But beyond that, the enforcement will have to be stepped up. It is very important. Once we have records that people are being buried without going through the due processes, then it means the system is failing at some level. And we need to address that as soon as possible. Local assemblies in particular will have a lot to do because sometimes in the bigger areas, you cannot escape it. But especially in the rural communities, it is possible for people to be buried without even the local assemblies knowing. And we think they should step up their education and enforcement activities at that level. Well, do watch out for Joseph Opokugapo's documentary on the risks of people being buried alive on this channel soon. Now, some of the escapees in the Denu jailbreak who were rearrested have pleaded guilty to some of the charges. At the court hearing today, two of the suspects, Koku Azasu and Linus Ashite, have been fined 4,000 cities or will be sentenced to three years in prison for escaping lawful custody and two years in prison for conspiracy, respectively. Ivy Setoji is there and joins us now. Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, Ivy, good afternoon. So, what more can you report? Well, the, uh, the court is ongoing. They are, we are still there. Okay. And then, uh, at the end of the day, hopefully, they so everything will be sorted out, especially with the fact that Koku. Uh, and Linus have uh, pleaded. Ali, can you speak up a bit? We can hardly yes. hear you. Okay. Uh, by the end of today, by the end of the court, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, police uh, hope that everything will be in order, especially for the fact that Koku and Ashite have, uh, they, they pleaded guilty to the charges, as you earlier mm -hmm. said. Uh, so right now, the court is ongoing. Uh, what they want, the, the, the big question now is, where was the second officer on duty? Uh, when they broke the jail, because according to the first officer, mm. uh, he said he heard a noise from the charge office, uh, like something uh, being hit uh, within a think sort of an hour. About seven of the remand prisoners came out of the cell, crossed the road, and escaped. And then he later realized that the two AK 47 were missing. That was one of the officers uh, who was on duty at that time. And he also said that around 12. 15 a.m. that very uh, that fateful day, he, he said that he was lying under a tree reading his uh, SMS from his mobile phone when a group of five men came to ask 
one of the remand prisons, that's Koku Azafi, alias Boyu. But he told them it was late that they came, they should come back the next day. One of them spoke in a verse and said he, he wanted to die, or you know, like Nitya Ajibi Yaku, sometimes our dialect. So five of the men who came pointed a, a pistol at him, according to the, uh, the officer in charge uh, on this year at that time. So right now, they don't know how, uh, uh, how where the second officer was at that particular time where the jail broke. So we hope by, by the close of the day, uh, we will be able to uh, find answers to those questions. But for the meantime, uh, Koku Azasu and Linus, uh, uh, those are their charges. So uh, mm. that is what is happening now. We are just okay. hoping that okay. at the end of the day, we know what happened. So Ivy, these two persons, uh, well, they have pleaded guilty and they have been fined, you see. Uh, in default, they are to serve jail terms. Uh, yes. are, are they supposed to, those jail terms, are they supposed to be in relation to their previous crimes or they are separate? Um, separate. According to uh, what we had, uh, separate. Um, they will continue with the other ones uh, as the court. Okay, so that means they will, in, if they are unable to pay this money, they will be serving this term together with any other term they are supposed to serve. Is that the case? Exactly. exactly. Okay. Thank you very much for that update. We'll keep our tabs on that. Ivy Setoji is a voter regional correspondent. She joined us on the phone with a lot more on the Denu jailbreak. Now, as part of efforts to clamp down on the recent phenomenon of cell breaks, the Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Al Hassan, on Wednesday visited some police cells in the country. Five cell breaks have occurred in the past month with the latest being the cell break at Tepa in the Ashanti region. Now, the IGP ordered that two police officers be placed at the entrance to the country's police cells and also called for the fortification of the cells. The IGP, accompanied by some senior police officers, visited the Kaswa, Accra Central, and Ashaiman police cells. Superintendent Sefazata is public relations officer of the Ghana Police Service. He comes down himself to see whether the reports that his commanders have been giving him concerning their work at, at, at their jurisdictions are true to type, are true, are true to what is happening on the ground. And uh, if you recall, quite recently, a couple of police stations across the country uh, recorded some prisoner escapes. In the wake of that, some directives were issued to the commanders as to how to go about things and uh, stick to the service instructions concerning the management of these police cells and uh, police stations and not just something that has been stage managed or staged for him to come and see that all oh, things are nice. Police officers who have been involved are being checked. The fact that the IGP himself is visiting and the fact that he has issued directives to his officers to stick to the rules and regulations within the service instruction are all steps that we are taking. But it is not about guards, it's about buildings that are old, about, um, about so? metal, metals so? that are being it's cut. It's not in all cases. You see, it's not in all cases that you you say, I mean, uh, 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 if you have new grills mm, installed in buildings and the, the officers on duty do not stick to the rules and regulations and they, are, they show signs of laxity in their work and they allow uh, hacksaw blades and other equipment to go inside, they can cut even the newest rod. Some residents of Boon Katamanso constituency are worried about the continuous abduction and killing of children in Atadeka. Their worries follow the arrest of a Togolese national for defiling and murdering a seven-year-old girl in that area. My colleague Beatrice Edu has been speaking with some of the residents and joined me here earlier on Newsdesk. So, uh, what have these residents been telling you? Hmm. Obviously, they are not happy about what's going on. Hmm. Uh, they think that this is becoming too much, and uh, they, 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 they think that <laughs> their own children are not safe, because if you send your child out, you may not know whether the child will be abducted and later killed. Let me tell you that I, and some of them were actually even afraid to speak on record, but mm. one of them, Alice, spoke to us on record and she was virtually in tears. We can hear her. Yeah, we can all listen to Alice. Yeah. 
I only played with the government to do very good investigation and see to the person who is behind all this because this is not the first time it's a child missing in this area. I know in Ghana if you don't have money, you have nobody to be with you. But when you have money, they give bribe, they just do the case, foolish case. But just put yourself into the woman's shoe. She's the only child of the mother. If it were to be you, what will you do? Let's do something about it. Let's just don't say it for now and leave it behind. It's unfair. For now, I've heard about four cases at my top here. They used to come. Please, have you seen a little girl? A 12-year-old girl has lost her life at Achimbon to Subwa in the Achimansa district of the eastern region. This was after a three-bedroom madhouse in which she was sleeping with two other people collapsed following a heavy downpour. Ikea Brakwa's head is said to have been hit by a portion of the falling structure, which killed her instantly. Her mother was among other victims who suffered various degrees of injuries. We're joined on phone now by Deputy Superintendent of Police of Fusweni, who is the Achimansa District Police Commander. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon, bro. So uh, what, what can you tell us about this particular uh, situation? Yes, yesterday was a sad day for Achimasa District in the sense that uh, we experienced a heavy rainfall at Ofuasin uh, and its environs, among which was uh, Achimbo Tudasi. In fact, um, yesterday, around from 6 p.m. onwards, the, the rain started unabated to the point that uh, some, some roofs or some buildings were ripped rip off. And, but we, did, we couldn't uh, you know, experience any casualty. Mm. But unfortunately, at a team on today, I a start event happened. You see, the, the mother of three, that is um, a Margaret Sewa, 45. Then her uh, two daughters, Eunice Brown, 13, and Akwena, uh, 6. They took shelter in their room. But unfortunately, that building seemed to be a, 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 a dilapidated one. And during the, the rainstorm, the, 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 the structure collapsed on them. I see. Okay. So As it happened, um, mm. Eunice Brakun, uh, Brakun died on the spot, whereas uh, Margaret Sewa and the other daughter, Akwena Akwena, they sustained some injuries, and they were fortunately being rescued by some good Samaritans. Afterwards, they were rushed to the John's Clinic at Ofuasi. But okay. the condition was such that they were referred better to or that government was the where they are, you know, they are responding to treatment now. And the, the body of uh, the deceased, Brakua, has been deposited at the same hospital's mortuary, pending autopsy. Okay. So that's the situation on the ground now. All right. Thank you very much sir, for that update. Uh, we thank you very much. Over You're welcome. There. We can now move over to business and check out the very latest happening there as well. Let's do some sports now, which is proudly brought to you by Mixi Mill Powder and start with tennis on the local scene. The Minister of Youth and Sports, the Honorable um, uh, Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, has uh, paid a visit to the Accra Sports Stadium to have a look at what's uh, going on as far as the Magdan Tennis Championship is concerned. Highly excited about the uh, tournament that is currently ongoing and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank and congratulate McDan's Shipping Company Limited for this unique um, you know uh, support that they are lending uh, to promote uh, the development of tennis in Ghana. Um, I also hope that the players who have been selected to participate in the tournament will take the games very serious and then see it as an opportunity to develop their own individual talents uh, to the extent that they can one day or even tomorrow be representatives of the country in various international tournaments like the David Cup, the West African Open, the All Africa Games and what have you. The Honourable Sports Minister, Dr. Mustafa Ahmed, there. We also caught up with the CEO of McDan Shipping Company, Mr. Michael McCauley, and, uh, on why he is uh, sponsoring this event. I'm a tennis fan. I play tennis. I love tennis. 
So I decided to take on to tennis as my corporate social responsibility. I was surprised when I saw the first few matches today. And if I tell you the level of uh, competitiveness in this uh, tournament is, 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 is serious. Um, I love what I have seen and it's given me more encouragement to do more for Ghana tennis. Yeah. Just sponsored four top players to Spain. Uh, they are going to Spain, All is, everything is set. They decided to stay to participate in this tournament uh, before going. Actually, they are going to train to participate in the Davis Cup, upcoming Davis Cup, in, I think in October. And those were the winners of last year's event, of course, who have had the opportunity uh, to go to Spain. And I'm sure when they come back, they'll be competing very strongly on the local scene as well. We're both up to a big game coming up later this weekend in the first Capital Plus Premier League at the Accra Derby, our own version of El Clasico, if you like. Accra had to work in action against Accra Great Olympics. We've been to the training grounds of the Daddy Boys, and we spoke to defender Dan Koya ahead of the game. The two class before you know i started from olympics before going to us so i don't think no it's a derby match but it's not all that like you know and now to the league is not like our time in 2000 so i hope it will be very good match in africa they are performing well but the league they are not performing well so we don't have too much thing to say but then uh, before Sunday, we are going to judge who, the one who will win the game. Firmino is on form and he is scoring left and right. You as a defender, how are you going to contain him? Oh, after that one, yeah, the Sunday will decide. I, mean, I won't say, I won't speak too much. The, the Sunday, though, is a very good striker and I'm also a very good defender. So. Accra Heart of Oak defender Dan Quay there. We also caught up with the former Black Stars uh, striker Gordon Atram. Was, um, we have been training since last week um, while uh, as a folk uh, are we playing their um, African uh, Cup or whatever. Uh, the team has worked very hard for the past 10 days and you can see uh, our training today that uh, is very hectic. We have to train because uh, football is all about training. Believe me, without training, you cannot do anything. And right now, as of folk are in very, very tough form. Olympics are also in very, very tough form. It's a very crucial game. It's a classical game. But uh, the one who works hard on the field and got uh, the full of luck will win the game. I've been watching the uh, as of folk uh, matches for a while now. Also, Olympics before I even joined them. What I saw from the as of folk team, uh, I don't think they can win Olympics. Believe me. Even though they are in top form, I don't believe they can win Olympics. Uh, if you talk of midfield and uh, and uh, the defensive wise, Olympics are far ahead of us. Of folk. As an experienced player, all I want my boys to do is that uh, uh, we're going to play most of the balls because uh, if you're able to keep most of the balls, that's where you have a, a whole power and uh, a, a lot of uh, places to, to move around. As you can see, Barcelona and uh, all the other big clubs in Europe, they try to keep the ball. And if you are able to keep the ball, you win the game. That's why I'm telling you that Asofo cannot win Olympics, because they cannot hold the ball in the midfield. Let's do some boxing now and the weighing uh, ahead of uh, the bout between uh, Yemena Otego and uh, Jobet Reyes of uh, Philippines has taken place here in Accra. Uh, These are pictures coming through from uh, the events where the two boxers are waiting for the bout. 135 pounds book, uh, both uh, boxers are uh, supposed to weigh. That's uh, the limit for the lightweight division uh, as far as uh, this bout is uh, concerned. And the big fight, of course, will be on at the Accra Sports Stadium later tomorrow. Uh, April 24th, uh, skipper of the senior national team, Yasamajan, who is a promoter of uh, Baby Jet Promotions, will be there as uh, well. So the place to be is uh, the Accra Sports Stadium for the WBA International Lightweight Championship between Imano Otego and Jubert Reyes of Philippines. We wrap up with... Uh, 
another boxing story, this time Boxing International. The big one uh, being uh, the May, the second bout between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and, of course, uh, Manny Pacquiao in tickets to, uh, for those bouts are now out. Now, the National Commission of Civic Education is having its third National Dialogue series here in Accra. My colleague Derek Ekosam joins me live for some more on this particular one. Hello, Derek. Yes, Kwabna. So, Derek, what, what, what more can you report? What has happened so far? Well, a lot of things have happened so far mm. between 10 o'clock when the program started and now, and uh, a lot of issues have also come up for discussion. We've had our, um, Honorable Alban Babin, the majority leader and MP for Nadoli Kalio, representing the majority, with Honorable Ignatius Bafuiwa representing the minority, he's the, he's the MP for Sunyani West. Now, one issue that stands out was a comment that was made by uh, Honorable Alban Babin that the members of parliament would want total separation of powers. He said that the system where the president is allowed to choose ministers from parliament is actually hindering the progress of parliament. And that call was also supported by Professor Michael Quay, who is a former member of parliament for Domi Kwabinya, and he was saying that the fact that some ministers or uh, some members of parliament will look up to the president for ministerial appointment does not augur well for us as far as the rule of law is concerned and also as far as the separation of law, uh, the, the separation of powers is also concerned. Now, a lot of things have also gone on. They were trying to compare Ghana's mm -hmm. parliamentary system to that of both the British and the uh, American system of governance. They also calls for media participation in committee meetings for, of parliament. They said that the lack of information and then misconception by the public is also a worrying trend that needs to be kept. Governor, a lot of things have gone on. It might interest you to know that only 25% of the people who filled the forms by the NCC say that the MPs have done well as regards checking government budget expenditure. Both parties on the days accepted that and they have promised to work to improve that Kwabna. I see. Now, some very interesting things that seem to have come up there. Now, uh, th this particular decision that stands out that you mentioned that uh, Alban, Kingsford uh, uh, Alban Bagbin mentioned that indeed uh, government should actually focus on not picking so many people from parliament. Now, uh, are these sentiments that uh, cut across on the landscape. Do people also, uh, do other members of parliament who are present here also feel same? Yes, as I said earlier, Professor Michael Kui actually reiterated that call. And there are other people also on the uh, here present who are also supporting that particular call. But they also think that it may be very difficult because if the constitution is allowing the president to choose whoever he wants to be minister, he may want to go back to parliament to choose people. And so what they are also asking for is a total amendment of that particular clause in the Constitution. So they're asking for a constitutional amendment? Yes, precisely, Governor. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Derek Ekosam, reporting there for us now. We can do some other stories now. And President John Mahama has commended Nigeria's outgoing president, good luck, Jonathan, for peacefully conceding defeat in the just-ended elections. The chairman of the Economic Community of West African States, Equus, described the gesture as a great show of statesmanship. President Mahama said this when he called on Nigeria's own outgoing president, good luck, Jonathan, at the presidential palace in Abuja. Store meeting with good luck, Jonathan, President Mahama said the ECOWAS and the international community is proud of Nigeria and looking forward to a smooth transition. I took the opportunity to commend him for his statesmanship that was displayed, you know, after the election. Um, we all knew that he congratulated uh, President Elaine Buhari uh, um, uh, after the election uh, results and uh, he conceded. And um, I think that that was a very, very uh, great sign of maturity because I the respect of all Nigerians, but also the respect of the international community for uh, what he did. We expect a smooth transition, and um, considering the role that Nigeria plays in ECOWAS being the biggest economy, not only in our sub-region, but in, on the whole continent, um, Nigeria is a very important member of our sub-regional bloc, and we expect
expect that Nigeria will continue to play its uh, prominent role in the ECOWAS uh, sub-region. President Mahama later on met with President-elect of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, and congratulated him on behalf of the sub-regional body. The ECOWAS chair urged other African countries to emulate Nigeria's example of conducting peaceful and credible elections. With what has happened in Nigeria, it sets the example for the other countries to be able to follow in terms of the standard of election hearing. Um, in my second hat as the president of Ghana, as you know, Ghana and Nigeria have a very close relationship and um, will continue to work uh, closely with Nigeria. We share the same values. Our cultures are similar, our people are uh, similar, and we've always had a very close relation. So in international affairs, we'll continue to collaborate and uh, share the same uh, interests. Well, that'll be it for news today. This is uh, my name is Kwabna Chenchen Ibuati. Before we go, a quick recap of our top stories. This are lawyers of A's broadcaster KKD say their clients will continue to work free as far as victim remains unwilling to testify against him. Joint news investigations uncover massive diversion of chemical inputs meant for cocoa production in the Ashanti region. Residents of Atadeka in the Kwon Katamansu constituency alarmed about the continuous abduction and killing of children in the area. But that's it for the hour. For more news, do all to log on to myjournline.com. My name is Kobna Shinshe Have a good afternoon.